Hello, I'm Matthew Gray LaHue, the Community Development and Engagement Manager. I am currently working on the Listigood Custom Area Election Code, which is the topic of today's video. The development of the Custom Area Election Code started in 2017, where there were several community sessions and a survey to hear what the community had to say about it. Based on the feedback from the community, it was clear there was an appetite for change and establishing our own election code. As such, a draft election code was developed and based on the input from the community. In 2021, the Chief and Council recommitted to the customary election process and established the Election Code Committee to restart the discussions around the election code. Before we get started, I wanted to note that everything we cover in this video and any additional election code materials, including the latest draft, will be available at listagoods.ca. Simply look for the election code tab on the front page. This is also where you can find our survey, which will be our primary way to obtain feedback from the community. I strongly encourage you to complete the survey. It really helps us. Working with the feedback from our previous community engagement, we were able to find three specific areas that we need clarity on. I'll I will go over the information that we need and I ask that you complete our survey to help us find the answers. The first area we need help with is the size of council. Based on the feedback, it is easy to say the majority of respondents want to shrink the size. What isn't clear is what is the proper number of counselors. Our current draft is working on the assumption that eight is a good middle ground, but it is only one for discussion. It is not final. The next area we want to discuss is the length of a term. The feedback we received indicated there was an appetite for a longer term, but we want to confirm with the, com the community that is what they still want and what the proper length should be. We also want to hear how a counselor's role should be structured. Should it be a full or part-time position? If they are full-time, should they have to take a leave from their job? A big change from the Indian Act is that we establish our own candidate criteria. The criteria is quite simple. The candidate must be a member of the Listigoj Mi'kmaq government, have Listigoj Mi'kmaq ancestry, be at least 18 years old, not have been convicted of a criminal offense within five years prior to the date of the election, not have been removed from office three years prior to the date of the election, and not be the CEO, the electoral officer, or the deputy electoral officer due to conflict of interest. The next step is the nomination process, which mostly remains the same. Electors can nominate or second a candidate at the notice of nomination meeting or via mail. For a nomination to be valid, it requires a nomination and a second. What does change is in the election code is that the possibility of a, an election, a, a filing fee be added. When we last engaged with the community, the idea of a filing fee was brought up and we wanted to verify with the community if this was something they still wanted. And if yes, what should that amount be? And if a non-monetary alternative should be allowed? Uh, a potential scenario of how a fee and non-monetary option would work was included in the draft, and I'll describe it briefly. After being nominated and receiving a second, the candidate would have to pay $200 in cash to the electoral officer or obtain the signature of 20 electors supporting their nomination. A little side note here, the filing fee for the position of chief would be a little higher at $400 or uh, the signatures of 50 electors. The prospective candidates would have to pay their or submit their list no later than five days following the, the date of the nomination. If the candidate fails to pay the fee or submit their list of support in time, they will be considered as refusing their nomination. A topic that came up in the last round of the community sessions and was incorporated in our draft election code was the role of the chief counselor slash vice chief. Uh, Listigoj in the past has given the counselor with the most vote the honorific title of chief counselor. However, this title never bestowed upon the holder any additional powers or responsibilities above that of a regular counselor. It was purely an honorific title. It does exist in a few First Nations and is usually treated as a separate elected position with different roles and responsibilities to a regular counselor. 
mainly replacing the chief should they not be able to attend a council meeting or temporarily taking over the position should the chief be incapable of completing their roles or the position of chief becomes vacant and they take over that role until a new election or by-election can be had for the position of chief. With this context, we would like to ask you, should the position of chief counselor or vice chief exist? And if yes, how should they be selected? This brings us to the end, uh, to the end of the topics we wanted to cover in this video. I would like to remind you that all the election code materials, including the latest drafts, are available at listicles.ca. Just click on the election code tab on the home page. This is also where you will find our survey. And I can't stress this. This is our primary way of feedback from the community. I strongly encourage you once more to complete the survey. Thank you very much for your time. Please watch our other election code video, which covers other parts of the draft code that we didn't have time to go over today. Thank you very much.